first of all i would thank all of you for your great response to the essential skills series though we have been able to discuss about the skills for only a few mechanical engineering profiles there is definitely much more to come in that space i noticed the comments and emails from a lot of you for making basic courses on each one of these profiles so i'm starting this series on piping design today in this series we will cover all the technical aspects that we discussed in the piping design engineer video so welcome to the first lecture of our course on piping design in this lecture we will learn what is a pipe difference between a pipe and a tube and where they are used and then we will look at the broad classification of pipes based on their material based on the industry they are used based on the fluid they transport based on the manufacturing method based on the length and the pipe end pipes are hollow cylindrical products used for conveying fluids like liquids gases and fluidized solids pipes are designed to handle the pressure due to fluid flow and to withstand various operating conditions such as temperature and corrosion pipes are extensively used in oil and gas process industries chemical and petrochemical complexes food and beverage industries power sectors steel industries hvac industries plumbing pipeline industries refineries etc in normal life we might use the terms pipe and tube interchangeably but in engineering and industry the terms are uniquely defined tubes are used for structural purposes so the outside diameter becomes the most important dimension while pipes are used to transport gases or liquids so the amount of fluid that can pass through it is more important to know tubes can come in different shapes such as square rectangle cylindrical whereas pipe is always round the principal uses for tube are in medical devices heat exchangers instrument lines and small interconnections on equipment such as compressors boilers etc now pipes are normally classified based on the material which is used to produce the pipe during manufacturing in general there are two types of pipes metallic pipes and non metallic pipes the pipes made of metal are known as metallic pipes and they are grouped into two categories pipes made from ferrous materials and pipes made from non ferrous materials now the type of pipes made from ferrous materials are stronger and heavier these pipes have iron as their main constituent and some of the common examples of these pipes are carbon steel pipes stainless steel alloy steel dss cast iron pipes ductile iron pipes etc this category of pipes is suitable for higher temperature and pressure applications most of the pipes used in oil and gas refinery chemical petrochemical power plant etc are made of ferrous materials the type of pipes made from non ferrous materials are those that iron is not the main constituent element they are usually made up of copper aluminium nickel titanium or zirconium non metallic pipes are widely used for services where temperature is not significant non critical services like water industries and drainage systems make use of the non metallic pipes common non metallic pipes could be pe or lgpe pipes upvc pvc and cpvc pipes polypropylene pipes reinforced thermoplastic pipes or rtps abs pipes composite pipes like 
GRE, GRP, FRP pipes, cement and asbestos pipes, and vitrified clay pipes. The main advantages of reinforced plastic and composite pipes are that they are highly corrosion resistant and durable, while metallic pipes are usually designed for up to 25 years of service. Composite and reinforced plastic pipes can easily serve up to 50 years. However, their main limitation is the temperature. Non-metallic pipes are not suitable for high temperature applications. Cement pipes manufactured from reinforced concretes are usually used for storm water, gravity service, irrigation industries and culverts. Now some materials discussed just now have been combined to form line pipe systems. For example, a carbon steel pipe can be internally lined with material able to withstand chemical attack, permits its use to carry corrosive fluids. Linings like Teflon for an example can be applied after fabricating the pipe. Usually the internal lining is made up of glass various types of plastics or concrete and also coatings can be applied such as epoxy, bituminous, asphalt, zinc, etc. which can help to protect the inner pipe. Now depending on the type of industry, there are three types of pipes. Pipes for chemical and power piping industries, Pipe for plumbing industry and pipe for pipeline industries. Now the types of pipes for chemical and power piping industries are suitable for high temperature and pressure applications. Mainly pipes from ferrous metals are used in chemical, power, petrochemical, steel, oil and gas industries. They are usually designed following codes like ASME B31.3 and ASME B31.1 and various other international codes. They are usually selected based on their ability to sustain pressure, temperature, corrosion resistance, etc. Common plumbing pipes are PVC pipes, PEX pipes, copper pipes, ABS, cast iron and galvanized steel pipes. They are mainly used for the water distribution purposes. Pipes used in the pipeline industries are usually known as line pipes and are designed by API 5L standards. There are various grades of API 5L pipes that are used to convey oil, gas or water through pipelines. Other types of pipeline material are stainless steel, duplex stainless steel, super duplex stainless steel, glass reinforced epoxies and fiber reinforced plastics. Depending on the type of fluid they transport, pipes are categorized as water pipes which transport water, gas pipes that transport gaseous substances, vapor pipes that carry vapors of products, oil pipes that transport crude or processed oils, steam pipes transporting steam and hydrogen pipes that carry hydrogen. Now pipes can also be classified based on the method of manufacture. These are again subcategorized depending on the material of the pipe. For example, metallic pipes can be categorized as seamless and welded pipes. Seamless pipes are made from a round steel billet. A solid cylindrical chunk of steel that is cast from raw material. This billet is then heated, stretched out and pushed or pulled over a form. This is then pierced through the center with a die and manual which increases the inside diameter and reduces the outside diameter. Even though seamless pipes are manufactured in a variety of sizes, with an increase in pipe diameter, the production cost increases. The name seamless comes from the absence of steel. Seamless pipes are widely used in process piping, power piping, shipbuilding, pressure vessels, construction and chemical industry.
you can look at the different types of seamless pipes that are commonly used. Now welded pipe is made of cold forming flat strips, sheets or plates into a round or circular shape by a roller or a plate bending machine. The pipe is then welded with or without filler material using a high energy source. Welded pipes can be produced in large sizes without any size rest restriction. They are normally used for transportation of water, oil or gases in large quantities. Commonly, two types of welded pipes are used, ERW pipes and LSAW pipes. ERW or electrical resistance welding pipe is made from steel coil and the weld seam runs parallel to the pipe. While LSAU or longitudinally submerged arc welding pipe uses a single medium and thick plate as the raw material and a steel plate is pressed into a tube blank in a mold or a forming machine. In general, pipes with a diameter of less than 16 inches are seamless and larger diameter pipes are welded. Seamless pipes are preferred due to the absence of weld seam, which is considered a weak point. However, they are costlier than welded pipes. Also for larger diameter pipes, producing seamless pipes becomes very difficult. Now, the pipe length measures the distance between the ends of the two pipes. The most common terms used to designate the pipe lengths are single random length, double random length and cut length. Single random length usually measures 5 to 7 meters in length. Pipe sizes below 2 inches are generally manufactured in single random length. And double random length usually measures 11 to 13 meters in length and pipe sizes above 2 inches are manufactured in this way. Cut length pipes do not have any specified defined length. They are cut into specific lengths according to the project requirements. Cut length pipes are generally more expensive but helps in reducing the pipe cutting time and resources on site and also reduces the small pipe length wastage that arises after cutting the single and double random length pipes. Now the last classification of pipe is based on the pipe ends. Pipe ends describe the configuration of pipe section end. Understanding pipe ends is important as it would be very inappropriate to specify welded connection to a threaded pipe or a threaded connection to a large diameter pipe. There are three main types of pipe ends, plain ends, threaded ends and bevel ends. Now simply a plain end is a pipe that has been cut at 90 degree perpendicular to the pipe length and run. The plain ends are generally used for smaller diameter pipe systems and in combination of slip on flanges and socket weld fittings and flanges. Threaded end pipe is a pipe that has tampered grooves cut in the ends of the pipe length run. This is typically used for pipe sizes that are 3 inches or smaller. Threaded pipes and fittings are also referred to as screwed pipes and fittings. Threaded pipes and threaded fittings can easily be assembled without welding or other permanent means of connection. Threaded pipes and fittings have threads that are either male or female. Male threads are cut into the outer surface of the pipe, while female threads are cut into the inner surface of the pipe. As threaded pipes and fittings are assembled, two pieces are pulled together. And the distance that is pulled together is called the thread engagement. A bevel end pipe is a pipe that has been cut at a bevel angle to the pipe length run. The standard angle on the pipe bevel is 37.5 but other non-standard angles can also be produced. Beveling of a pipe or tubing is done to prepare the ends for welding. The bevel ends are applied to all diameters of butt well flanges 
or fittings and will be directly welded to each other or to the pipe. So this was all about pipes. Thanks for watching this lecture. See you in the next one.